Welcome to Lynn Cullen Live at PGHCityPaper.com. Email your questions and comments to Lynn at PGHCityPaper.com. Hello, hello, hello. Well, here we are. Here we are. We being Tom Sokolowski, former director of the Warhol Museum, and I, Lynn Cullen, and you, and it's a Thursday, and looks like we're going to have a good start because Milt... Milton, what do you do? You can't make noise with your straw like that. Did I make you noise? Hear you? No. What do you do? Do it again. You went. <laughs> you know oh. how you know, like you know. Okay. okay. <laughs> I had a, well, it's not a Slurpee, but Mr. Bloomberg would not like it. It's super sized. <laughs> You're entitled. You cannot let the nanny state take over your breakfast choice. The nanny state? Yes. <laughs> Okay, so Milton has written in. Yes. You and Chris mentioned Dorothy Parker on yesterday's show. You you had just said your favorite Dorothy Parkerism was. Well, there was a, they were at the Algonquin uh, Round Table for lunch, where all these wits would the, in the twenties would meet, and they had this one game where they'd say a word, and so they said horticulture, and Dorothy Parker said famously, "You can lead a whore to culture, but you can't make her think." <laughs> Her lines were that's remember, quick. I mean, that's, that's quick. That's quick. Into horticulture, into rhyming. You know. Yeah. Oh, she was. She was. Her short stories are amazing. Yeah. So Milton writes. It just so happens that this is the 120th anniversary of Ms. Mrs. Parker's birth, uh, and uh, he says she's one of his favorite 20th century writers, not only for her much touted wit and sardonic whimsy, but for her much deeper understanding of her characters most human frailties. Her ability to emote, particularly the vulnerability of her female character's position in society during the first half of the 20th century is remarkable. Um, and then he has a quote. Um, did you do, Milton, what did you do? You send us a compendium of all her. <laughs> um, here's some quickies. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Here's, a, here's, a, here's one. I'm too fucking busy and vice versa. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I'll well, there was eat. one one that I was homos- he- heterosexual heterosexuality is not normal; it's just common. <laughs> well, one time she was—I can't remember who the person was—and um, uh, she was half Jewish, but didn't like people to know that because of anti-Semitism back in the time. And they were seated at the table, and someone made, and Dorothy Parker was Jewish. Yeah. And there was, uh, someone made an anti-Semitic comment, and she said, George, I'm just so offended, I'm going to walk out of this room, and I hope Lola will, will go with me halfway. <laughs> because, <laughs> because, because she, she was, was half Jewish. Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just that quick and so always so sharp. Oh, sharp. Know? Here's another. I like to have a martini, two at the very most. After three, I'm under the table. After four, I'm under my host. <laughs> I've never heard that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. And here's some of her prose. Uh, that a lot we, of her prose. Yeah. Well, here, I'll go with this one. Okay. Uh I'll call you at five, darling. Goodbye, darling. He was busy, and he was in a hurry, and there were people around him, but he called me darling twice. That's mine. That's mine. I have that, even if I never see him again. Oh, but that's so little. That isn't enough. Nothing's enough if I never see him again. Please let me see him again, God. Please. I want to see him so much. I want him so much. I'll be good, God. I will try to be better. I will. If you let me see him again, if you will let me telephone me. Oh, let me. Okay, so. <laughs> she's bargaining. Plangent and poignant. Bargaining. Yes. Bargaining. Oh, God, um, he's really going on about this. Okay. Um, that was from a telephone call written in 1930. Uh, and he... Milton, we'll give you your your um, critics um, do here. Uh, he goes on to say it is it is these moments, these quiet, solitary moments, full of want and almost palpable desperation, that Parker captures what we have all felt at one time or another. Her compassion, you know, I don't think of her as compassionate because I think oh, of her as such a honest, yeah. you know an eviscerating wit. Yeah. And I have not read her prose, so mm, in, in, in prose, there's more. Well, they're, they're somewhat funny, and some have this uh-huh. kind of... 
Her compassion and understanding of the plight of those in America for whom the white, mostly male-dominated hierarchy extended past her literary endeavors. When she died in 67, her entire estate and all future royalties from her written works were donated to the NAACP. Oh, I didn't know that. Hmm. She had great respect and empathy for the plight of African Americans as well as women. So, Lynn, while I know it is not your practice to give shout outs on your show, might you just this once, in honor of Mrs. Dorothy Parker, mention her birthday? You betcha. I mean, she, she had, I think. Thank you, Mel. As I remember, I think she had a, a rather brutal husband or something. I don't know if she was married for that long. Mr. Parker. Yes. Well, Mr. Parker, but who was Mr. No, Parker? No, I think he was. He was a, 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 a jerk. real jerk. Yeah. But I don't. I can't. That's all I can say. That's the vague yeah. memory that uh, that I have as well. Um, okay, so we are going. No, that's for something else. Mm. So we are going to um, wait. I just have a two. This is just hearkening back to some of the weightier topics earlier in the week. This is regarding <laughs> bicycle seats. Uh, just had to chime in on the bicycle seat talk. I'm a rather large woman. Hmm. I have a mountain bike. I Ooh. also have a cloud nine seat. What is that? Oh, that's got to be some big. <laughs> um, yeah. But on those so, mountain bikes, those are those little yeah, ones. Yeah, but she stuck a cloud nine on it. Well, don't, she said she's a she rather said, large woman. I suppose she And then to. she said, don't let anyone tell you it's like sitting on a cloud. <laughs> yeah, this that, reminds me, I have to, this reminds me yesterday of the name of your trivia group. What was it? <laughs> Bend down on your no, finger. No, no. <laughs> bear down bear on down. my finger. I, Gee. Thought the, I thought that was hilarious. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, just one other intrusion. The trivia thing you mentioned, I almost went on at the World Affairs Council. The third, gener the third gender thing? No, 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 no. Remember, you were talking about trivia, and that was such a silly trivia thing. But the World, world Affairs, Affairs Council has a trivia contest. is really serious. Oh, I bet it is. And we, we, Chris, you and I, I you have to have teams of five. Oh. And, they, and, when they're, when, and when you are able to, um, what do you call it, sign up for them, they give, like, past tests. And they're really, they're very serious. Like, who's the president of this... Oh, Military I wouldn't country. do well in oh, that. Of course you would. I mean, yeah, but better I, than you did with that on my finger. <laughs> I mean, what's Lindsay Lohan's last uh, yeah, right. stay and, in, uh, in I mean, detox? You know. Geez. Anyway, don't let anyone tell you it's like sitting on a cloud. I, for one, can tell you that it is not. I should have enough butt padding for it not to matter, <laughs> but it is still not a very enjoyable ride. The trail I usually ride is on really, really nice, especially when I reach Cedar Creek Park. I also have one of the mentioned hornless seats. Much more comfortable. Problem with them is I always slide forward. Well, that's what the horn was for, I guess, to keep you from doing it. Well, the horn, is that the front part? No, the horn is that, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that comes out here. I always slide forward because the nose of the seat is not there. So consider carefully before you purchase a bike or a seat. <laughs> now, now. Well, no, no, I mean, it's good. I mean, these are the things that one obsesses about in everyone's life. But to read about it, they seem so ridiculously silly. Um, okay. We were talking a bit about bridges. Um, and Paul wants us to know that he's been a big fan forever of the McKees Rocks Bridge. Okay, there it is, in case you haven't seen it in a while. Oh, it is very good. Then he, then he shows the Sydney Harbor yeah, Bridge. Yeah, and then he says the Sydney Harbor bridge. bridge looks pretty much yeah, I like, like it. it, as does the Hellgate Bridge over the East River in uh, New York. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Okay. Well, we were saying that nobody calls, no one's going to say that's the McCullough Bridge. But the people, and Chris pointed out, people are starting to say, well, maybe. I went over, you go over the Clemente Bridge right. and the Warhol Bridge, those two are starting to take right. because, obviously, because the Clemente right. Bridge right has that big right baseball there. park right, 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 right there, right, right, and right. the Warhol but it, may, the, well, but it may be simply the fact that... Uh, those know, are Clemente, bigger names. No, 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 no. Well, yes, but um, they've been around now. I mean, even I will still say to people sometimes Seventh Street Bridge, just because that's how I knew it. I mean, even though I was instrumental in getting it renamed, but I think it's just you know, 20 years, no one's gonna remember the Seventh Street Bridge and the 16th Street Bridge and whatever they're gonna now refer to them as. Yeah, but not all of them. I don't hear people say Rachel Carson Bridge. Well, that's the most recent. Well, that's no, the no, most no, recent the McCullough, before McCullough, is. but but of the three of the sister bridges. 
Oh, please. Okay, so. <laughs> Stupid thing. <laughs> Sometimes, <laughs> listeners, you write silly things. <laughs> Just That's as okay. we sometimes talk about silly things. And so. sometimes we fail to share them with you, which that is my, <laughs> that's, that's my prerogative. <laughs> okay. So we have been having, and what? I know you listen to the show somewhat, uh, relatively um, more the laid back shows uh, this week. I have not, Well, uh, yeah, I just, I, I, couldn't anymore. It's getting harder because there are some big stories happening and that I haven't said boo about. The big one today, and forgive me, I have to talk about it. Please. Did you hear about Bradley Manning's request? Bradley Manning just sentenced to 35 years. Right. And they think he may get out in six? No, 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 no. no. That has nothing to do with it. Okay, no, no, but... Bradley Manning Yes. asking his jailers, who I guess would be the United States military, Right. Um... Uh, telling them that he wants to be known as, what was the name? I don't know what you're talking about. Well, it's something like Martha. Well, you know, that's interesting. Okay, wait. It, right, it's a, he wants to live, he wants to live out his his years, what remaining you years. As a woman named Chelsea. As a woman. Chelsea. Chelsea. Well, you know, he I wants to, so he wants... He, he's saying I'm, I'm. He's saying he's transgendered. That he was never well, comfortable what being. Well, what you talked about yesterday. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And he wants to be Chelsea. Well, and, I had heard before he well, said that. I had heard that there were issues of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Prior to but, so, so his instability. He's just so his attorney is saying he would like the military, the army, to um, uh, give him, you know, hormonal treatment so that he is comfortable. And uh, they didn't say anything about paying for surgery to... Um, God, can you imagine the pundits on that? <laughs> well, the military, my understanding, has already said, hey, we respect everybody. Uh, you're not going to find it in the paper. Oh, okay. Uh, we, ex- we respect everybody's, you know, race, gender, sexual yeah. orientation, blah, 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 blah. But we we're not going to facilitate. No, it. we're not doing hormone sur- stuff, and we're not doing uh, blah blah blah. So they've pretty much said no right off the bat. But you can bet this will be something that will be oh, God. litigated. Well, now, okay. Well, you know the funny part of it is. Well, oh. what, so what is the right thing? To, the the no. fact is, the American taxpayers are not going to want to pay for Bradley Manning's no. sex change no. operation. But I'd pay for some meds. Hormones, no, right? No. Well, I guess the issue becomes: where do you house is, well, him? Is he no, housed? No, no, with no, 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 no. Well, I mean, they said. I mean, he's, he was over. How long was he in solitary? Like nine months or something? Oh no, I think it was longer. Was it longer? Yeah. But um, I guess my view would be: I mean, as a gay person, so I mean, I'm certainly on one side of the fence as opposed well, to the other. But, but I guess the question becomes: if his desire is born out of a total psychological um, screw up. Then he, well, I mean, in other what words, if he's going to be so tormented that, you know, he'd make his life worse than it is already being in jail for so long, then yes. If it's simply a desire on his part, like I'd like a, a nose job or something like that, then why should he be paid well, for it? Well, I don't think people make that request with, uh, lightly. It's true. not no, like no, no, a nose true, job. True, true. I mean, no, 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 like, no, I didn't, I, no, I didn't mean to. Okay, I'll sit here for 35 years, but please, I want to sit here as a woman. Let me do it in the bra. <laughs> yeah. I don't no, it's, know. No, it's a complex oh, issue. Tortured soul. Yeah. But I mean, right. what's sort of shocking, though, is that if this was known, which it seems before this whole business, shouldn't he have been, well, number one, um, gone through therapy of some sorts? But certainly not put in a position where he have access to sensitive well, absolutely, material absolutely, absolutely. for someone who seemed to be f- coming <laughs> apart at the seams. Right. I mean, this guy's had a tough road. Yeah. So, but it, I mean, it becomes more bizarre. I know. It, right? does, it, it does. It does. It does. But I mean, well, hearing that this morning, I thought, oh my God! <laughs> what will Rush what Limbaugh is, have to say? Oh God! Yeah, give him a gift. Wrap it. <laughs> Wrap it in, uh, yeah, pretty paper. Maybe, maybe put we should, a make, bowl around we should it. make Rush Limbaugh have a, a sex change operation. That we he don't. Tu- that no. he turns into Tony Fields. May I say, as a woman, we don't want, we don't him. want him. You can yeah, have exactly. him. Exactly. We do not want him. 
Um, okay. Well, while we're on some gender stuff, I'm sorry, this is getting serious. While we're on some gender stuff, um, this, um, I've been telling everybody not to drink Russian vodka. Oh, did you and see the piece? Then there was a piece, piece written, an op-ed piece in the New York Times. I smart. Yeah, saying that doesn't work and, in fact, might play right into Putin's right. hands. It just makes, if, you, if, you, if a bunch of Westerners start trying to hurt. Yeah, it's us uh, versus them. Kind yeah, of thing. they just double down. And, right. and he said, uh, the, the article said that if we do that, it might make things even harder for gays yeah, in exactly. Russia. I don't know. I don't know either way, but it, 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 there was a pretty well, because, compelling well, this, case. And this man had been the author of a book about the role that vodka plays in Russian culture and how it was used, yeah, certainly under Stalin well, earlier, but under Stalin they made it cheap so that people would become alcoholics and it would numb them to a lot of the you know crap going on. Um, so he talks about it, but he makes the point. He said, hey, as awful as it is, 82% of Russian pe- populace supposedly agrees with Putin on yeah. homosexuality. And again, it's us versus them that if you make it like, oh, the world is out against us and we're the purest, most noble people, it's just going to give him for greater but strength. But they are playing host to the world right? with the Olympics coming Well, in. this is where the IOC and has to... Uh, th- well, don't ever expect anything well, from the IOC. Uh, but so people from m- more uh, enlightened nations yeah. will be coming uh, to Russia. I mean, another big thing would be don't go. Well, right. Yeah. I well, mean, don't give them your money. Sure, right. Because I mean, that brings I, I millions of dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, it's very funny that one of the blogs I saw, gay blog, it mentioned that some, I can't remember, it wasn't American, but some lesbian said that she was going to wear um, the rainbow flag uh, yeah. nails. Yeah. And in response to that, there was someone from the IOC said that if people did that, they could be um, pulled <laughs> out of. Um, Exempted from participation because it would be just to inflame. Because uh, they said you couldn't, according to the IOC, you couldn't wear insignia, just like you're not supposed to wear. Well, Nike this will get something. interesting. Let's say, okay, because I'm I'm looking at something here that says it was a Swedish uh, runner. Okay. Uh, named uh, no, not runner, a high jumper named Ellen Emma Emma Green Trigaro. And she said she, um, well, they just had the uh, track. Uh, yeah, uh, what a field and track, or whatever it's called. Field, track and field. Track and field. <laughs> <laughs> they just had track and track and field world. Something um, or other, yeah. Yeah, the world competition in Russia. Right. And this, uh, some of the Swedish athletes, several, it said, painted their nails in rainbow oh, they colors. Did it. Oh, okay. They did it. And, um, <clears throat> and this Russian woman, medalist, gold medalist in the pole vault, said this. <clears throat> Excuse me. It is disrespectful to our country. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, God dang it. Spit up that hairball. Actually, she said it is unrespectful okay. uh, to our country. It is unrespectful to our citizens because we are Russians. Maybe we are different than Europeans, than other people from different lands. We have our law, which everyone has to respect. She went on to say, this is a genius, wait till you hear. She went on to say, it's my opinion also, you know, to do all this stuff on the street. We are very afraid about our nation because we consider ourselves like normal, standard people. We just live boys with women and women with boys. She added, it comes from history. Brilliant, huh? Yeah, give her the Nobel Prize for literature. Do you know what's interesting, though, that caught my ear about that? She says boys and women when in, you would never hear that in this country. What you hear is men and girls, yeah, exactly. Now that's interesting yeah, because sure. I have often heard of the emasculated Russian male. Oh, those Russian women are no, oh, yeah, 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 those yeah, tank yeah. drivers. Well, how can't we just all be men and women, and under a certain reasonable age, girls and boys, 
And any time you take the diminutive form and couple it with the adult form, you are definitely putting the, yeah, 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 the yeah, yeah, one yeah, group yeah. that you use the diminutive for in a sub, submissive position, yes, right. which you hear are in this backwater of Western Pennsylvania constantly, <laughs> yeah, constantly. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you hear women call, say, men and girls and yeah, right, girls, right, girls, right, girls. Right, right. And nobody seems to take offense. I took offense when I came here 30 years ago, and it still hasn't, it hasn't changed a bit. Oh, it's when you were the girl. I remember, <laughs> I remember that memo. You were about, no, the girl I did. I, sit. <laughs> I mean, we were still writing letters back in 30 years ago. I remember writing a friend back in Wisconsin. I feel like I've time traveled to come here. I said from Wisconsin. Yeah, from Wisconsin. I mean, well, Wisconsin about, was progressive. No, 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 no. But I mean, you weren't coming from San Francisco or Manhattan. Well, I, mean. I was coming from Madison, Wisconsin, which is well, yeah, Madison. Okay, I was talking more about Green Bay. But even in Green Bay, I mean, I just, I said, what? I said, all of a sudden, I'm a girl again. <laughs> Should we break into song? Oh, I'm a girl again, and I didn't. Like it. Yeah. No, you know, this and Russian thing is, I mean, especially speaking as a gay person, but what's very interesting about it is like, you know, I don't know what the right thing is to do. Because the point is, you know, when I heard about the vodka thing, and a lot of the gay bars supposedly aren't serving, you know, Stolchnaya or whatever, but that sounds good and it's a kind of feel good thing. Yeah. But the whole point is, what would be effective? Well, you know what? Fine. And it to me. Uh, I think you're right. You have not to go. I mean, that, yeah, but money. I wouldn't have gone anyway. But my, well, sure, but sure, if sure. I drank vodka, I still wouldn't drink their goddamn vodka. I would not. And that's an individual choice because right. I, that's my money. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. I earned that money, right. and I'll spend it on what I want to spend it on. Right. But the only thing is, though, that that's not right. going to affect Putin. Fine. Or, it help. Or, it makes me feel better. Okay. 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 I, but whatever. a protest, well, okay. I'm just talking about effective protest. I don't yeah. know what effective protest, but I think I would leave it largely to the athletes because I think these young people. Yeah, yeah. These I thought it would be people, great if every no, nation or many of the nations would, you know, when they bring in the flags, yeah. if they would have like the American flag and the rainbow. The, yeah. That I, think, I think there's lots of ways. They can't kick everybody out if no, everybody puts a not. rainbow pin on yeah, or does exactly. their rainbow nails. Yeah, of and course. And when this idiot Russian uh, gold medalist, Yelena Izinbayeva. The unreasonable uh, person. Yeah, got <laughs> done, got done uh, speaking. An American named uh, Nick Simmons, American runner, said this. It blows my mind that such a young, well-traveled woman would be so behind the times. She said, normal, standard people in Russia? <laughs> Guess what? A lot of these people with Russian citizenship are normal, standard, homosexuals. Right. And they deserve rights, too. Right. I would leave it to the athletes to, sure. Sure, 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 to sure. do it. That would be a groundswell. And he won a medal, and he dedicated it to oh, really? the LBG. Well, you know, the first thing I thought of when this all started was, do you remember... Oh, what, what was it? It must have been like 72 or something. When those black athletes stood and did the black power yeah, thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The black gloves. Oh, that yeah. was so effective. That was so, let me tell you how effective that was. <laughs> that was so effective. <laughs> I'm not laughing because you said that she just clicked on Russ Limbaugh as a woman. <laughs> He, That's you know probably what, what Miss Gadolina looks like. <laughs> that is the most disgust. You have, thank you, Joseph. You have just ruined my day. <laughs> I don't think it looks much like Russ. Ew! <laughs> <laughs> it's Russian about wearing a very revealing Halter dress top. with a or de <clears throat> decolletage, I think, or whatever. But yeah, <laughs> with his breasts. Yes, yeah, quite yeah. inflamed. <laughs> Oh, hilarious. God almighty, you guys. Don't you have work to do? <laughs> Maybe that's a plastic surgeon. <laughs> uh, Advertising his his skills. Okay. Uh, no, but uh, I can just go back quickly. But yeah, but, that, but just remember, we remember that it was such a... Uh, because you know what it was to me? It was that, no, no, let me let me remind you of the reaction to that. No, I know, I know. It was wholly negative. No, no, no. But the point is, though, there, I, what they were saying was, are we being... 
I mean, are we then floating back to Miss whatever her name was with the bad English, um, saying, oh, you know, sport is so pure and so beautiful, and we're just here to, to honor sport when, you know, black people are being beaten or, or gay people are being beaten, and these guys were saying, yeah, we did this, but, you know, we go back home and we're, you know, the N-word. And yeah, it was badly because I think you know, we've, and we've argued about this before. This notion of sport being pure and noble. Now it's about getting contracts from Nike, and getting you know Mary Lou Retton being on the Cheerios box. <laughs> no, and I, as I said, I think sport, in what it was originally intended, is a pure thing. But it's turned into a big oh, originally gatti intended. Gatti business. You think it just should be still a bunch of Greek men running around? No, well, buff. we could have Miss Gatolina Batolina. Uh, no, but it's just not about. So if you get a prize, they used to give you a laurel crown. Now it's a you know, post toasties box. Well, things change. I know, but for the worse. You know those guys that did that. What was his name? Oh, I, I want to say something Carlos. And really? oh, I don't their know. lives were, they, that, they paid. Yeah. They paid big time. But I respect that, For that, that though, courageous. Yeah, it's courageous. No, it was a courageous well, action. Well, because you know it was considered, it was, too- it, was con- it was courageous, and it was considered by the vast majority of Americans, outrageous, 90-some yeah. percent, outrageous. Well, because it was like, the, to make, not to make the They lesson, embarrassed but, the country. Well, yeah, when yeah, they yeah, were yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but maybe that's what they wanted to do. I mean, yeah. it's like the fart in the church pew, so to speak. <laughs> like in a noble place where athletics are, whatever, they made it real. And well, they had worn the colors like of the United States. They had won. Right. So they're standing on the, you know, Plimps, to, get their, yes. to get their medals. Awards. And when their national anthem played, they, they bowed did. their heads oh, that's right. and put yeah, yeah, their yeah, yeah. That's right. fists up in it's the air. And America went <laughs> ballistic. I just thought of another funny thing is uh, maybe instead of when they play the anthem, someone should put on like uh, an ABBA song for, you know, if it's a gay athlete. Dancing queen, you are... The- <laughs> It ain't going to happen. No, it's not. But I mean, I guess my point is, and not to go on about this, but it's just partly it's the fact that these things are made as if this was like a Nobel Prize. And, and to do anything that would, you know, sully it, whether it's a national bar, it's just so silly. Well, okay, that's your opinion. But it's, and I'm right. <laughs> it's heavy, fraught, all the nations, they care mightily about this stuff. There's bragging rights. There's well, national yeah, pride. Well, there's all this stuff on a world I stage. I know, but let's put national so, pride uh, into who does like the best corn crops. I mean, uh, people who work hard and do things. Or these athletes work very hard. Oh yeah, they're subsidized. Then most of them don't have jobs. Someone's oh, paying. Oh God, you are such. You read, a, you you get, read about these people uh, that. I, I, <laughs> they get you know tons of money and they get up at six in the morning and they're ice skating forever. And Oh, uh, you think they're having fun getting up at six in the morning and ice skating. I'm not saying it's not hard work. I never said that. But it's not noble. Okay. Doctors without borders. I mean that's noble, these people who go Who said on. it was noble? Oh well oh, come on. The Olympic oath, it's like more grandiose than the Pledge of Allegiance. But all those things are grandiose. I know, but... Uh, May I sing my high school alma mater? Oh, please. <laughs> really? It's early in the morning. You want to hear grandiose? That will wake up the chickens. <laughs> Noble women of Green Bay. <laughs> <clears throat> I know, I have to take a break, but quick, quickly. I'll yes. do it very fast. All right. All hail to the East High. Oh, I got to start higher. <laughs> all hail to the East High. Our alma mater, all praise and honor to thee we sing. Guide us and keep (laughs) us in thy eternal spirit. Ever victorious over our, our foes. 
foes. Our <laughs> foes. But you know what? Thank you very much. Well, you know, and I bet you can't sing your high school alma mater from beginning to end. Oh. I dare you. We're Mighty taking a break. Mighty and strong, Maris man, loyal and true are we. With all our might, we'll rise up and fight to gain a victory. You rock, rock. Go on and win that game. Bring honor and glory and fame. We're bold, we're brave, we're Maris, and we're proud of our gorgeous name. Boom, boom. Woo! <laughs> we'll take a break. But that was more of a Wars fight on the way With Lynn Cullen Live. Go to BergBargains.com for great deals on gift cards from your favorite local restaurants, bars, museums, attractions, and shows. This week, 50% off tickets to the Pittsburgh Irish Festival. Supplies are limited. BergBargains.com. Pittsburgh's best bargains. BergBargains.com. Come to Littles for all of your back-to-school needs. Littles has everything for all ages to stay in style for this upcoming school season. Check out the large selection from Doc Martin, Steve Madden, Ugg, Clark's, Lelly Kelly, New Balance, and much, much more. Don't forget to come visit this season's colorful handbag selection as well. Little Shoes, Pittsburgh's largest family shoe store, 5850 Forbes Avenue in Squirrel Hill. Hi, I'm LeVar Burton, and I'm proud to be a book person. How do I choose a book? Sometimes it's the cover, sometimes it's the title. I guess I'm pretty visual. If a book's really impressing me and the writing is really good, I will peek and see what the last paragraph is because the endings of books should rock you. I am a book person, and if you're a book person to read to a child and spark a lifetime of ambition, join me at bookpeopleunite.org because reading is fundamental. A public service announcement brought to you by Reading is Fundamental, Library of Congress, and the Ad Council. Have a question or an opinion? Call Lynn Cullen at 412-316-3381 or email lynn at pghcitypaper.com. Now, more with Lynn Cullen Live. Oh, oh my trip was ruined. <clears throat> I couldn't see the Mona Lisa. All righty. We're back. Again, immediately on the show, if you care to sing your <laughs> high school, high school... Uh, song. Oh dear, we'll see. Well, especially I'm, if you have a good voice, call us. Someone from the Pittsburgh. No, no, opera. no! You don't have to have a no, good voice. In fact, that probably is in get will get in the way. Don't that's you think? Yeah, that's probably true. Uh, okay. Wait, I'm just making a note. Okay. Now. <clears throat> All righty. I have this. This was in the paper today. Don't ask me why. They had writers send in there some of the sandwiches they loved when they were children. Okay. Do you have a sandwich that was your favorite sandwich as a child? This is the lighter fare again. <laughs> Not that I didn't remember. No? Really? No. No? no. Okay, can I give you some of oh, what please. Pittsburghers put? First of all, an extraordinary number of them said peanut butter and pickles. Ugh. Amazing. Have you eaten it? No, but I want one. Really? Do Peanut it? butter and pickles? Okay. The sour well, with they the... actually said that there is a restaurant, which one? The Hula Bar in Verona, that sells the Presley, it's called, which is peanut. Peanut butter, bacon. Mm. No. And banana. No. Elvis? No. Yeah. No. They're wrong. Well, wait a minute. Okay. They're wrong. I'm just reading what they have here. The hula bar says their Presley is, because he ate peanut butter and all kinds of. Yeah, right. Especially bacon. Okay. Especially with bacon? And banana. And banana. Yeah, but I've heard of that, okay. yes. But this one's peanut butter, dill pickles, and American cheese. Oof. on it. Oh, God. <laughs> you, must, you, you must be pregnant. No. <laughs> that sounds like something. I'm not. Pregnant. Don't you <laughs> okay. And here, some people even put their names on this. You'll love this one, Jess, because she came out for Miracle Whip the other day. Yeah. Oh, okay? instead of mayonnaise? Yes. Janet Sotler agrees with you. She says her memory of the greatest sandwich is to roll up a whole dill pickle in white bread with Miracle Whip. Yes. <laughs> oh, God. I want it now. <laughs> you are pregnant, I'm sure. I'm not, I'm okay, here's another one. J- Justine Pierce. Justine Pierce and you should get a, a, together. Peanut butter, Miracle Whip, cheddar, and salami. Yes, I want it. All of it. Just, here's Kimberly McKinnis. suggests Peanut butter and potato chips. 
Uh. And in fact, a lot of people eat mm-hmm. potato chip sandwiches. Mm-hmm. With that as the, the meat, so to speak? Yeah, that's the filling. The filling, I say. Ugh. Mm-hmm. People are odd. My father, I remember, liked tomato sandwiches. Okay. You know, with what no, that looked right well, now. Remember, well, remember. Big, big, thick, you know, steak tomatoes yeah. with salt and pepper at this time of well, year. Well, remember the comic strip Blondie, which I oh, think yeah, is sure. still being. Reruns. <laughs> no, I don't know. Blondie. Oh, well, the cartoonist he always can't be took, alive who did Blondie. Was that Dagwood? Yeah, Dagwood. Dagwood. But Dagwood. That was like the 20s or the teens. I know, but no, out. it's still in the paper. Don't ask me. Dagwood, she would make him, this is my memory from my child, she would make him cold mashed potato sandwiches. Huh. So the mashed potatoes <laughs> left over from the night before. And I thought that was the most horrible sounding thing I ever. But Jess is, look, Jess has in drool the, coming out of her. When I knew he <laughs> what? was the one for what? me. When you what? Because we both love potato salad sandwiches. You knew he was the one for you because he too He's loved. The only other person I know. Potato, potato salad, salad sandwiches. sandwiches. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, bread being bread, you can stick yeah, bread. Yeah, that's right. But why would you? Bread's do that? neutral. <laughs> exactly. Bread is neutral. Now this is one day if Dorothy Park were here, she'd make some joke about <laughs> potato salad sandwiches, or pickles and applesauce sandwiches. No, yeah, well, that's Danielle pancakes. Camp. Yeah. And here's one from Rich Troy. His favorite is hot ham, turkey, and pepperoni topped with mashed potatoes. And if he can't have that, he'll do egg salad and turkey breast. Mm-hmm. Well, that's, yeah, that's relatively pretty. normal. Okay, so egg I salad is something, if it's really <coughs> well made. You know who makes wonderful egg salad? You know, town. but here we can get into an entire well, thing about what makes a good egg that's salad. That's true. Okay, so well, we'll, uh, is, um, what's that? There's about four of them around town. Pamela's makes wonderful oh, egg yeah, salad. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's bits of pickle in it, and it's really, mm-hmm. or pickle lily, I'm not sure which. A lot, of people, a, pickle lily a lot of people years. saying that any kind of relish or pickle in an egg salad is Absolutely an outrage. Trafe. <laughs> but well, I, well, I'm not one. Egg and goop. Egg and Miracle Whip. Miracle or Whip. Or egg and mayo. Have you seen their new campaign for Miracle Whip no. on television? No. Where they, they play as if it's in the time of the Puritans, and the woman comes out, and she has the new Miracle Whip logo on, and they want to, you know, burn her at the stake. And she says, have you tasted it? It's tangy and sweet. <laughs> You're in trouble. Ray has written, oh dear. and it starts with, not to pick an argument with someone I admire. He's talking yeah, about you. Yeah, so sports. Oh, Ray. I wonder if Tom could shine the cynical light with which he illuminates sports. Yes, Ray! On to the new yes. world of art. As much as he claims sports is about contracts and money, I wonder if he sees the modern art world Oh, of course. I completely agree. And we, in fact... Psh- uh, there's an article, maybe this is what prompted you, Ray. Um, there's an interest, well, a potent article today that was on the front page of the New York Times, basically about saying that nowadays, rather than collectors and critics, or whatever, going to galleries, as they've done for centuries, they now go to these art fairs. And art go, Basel, yeah. Art Miami, yes. Art Hong Kong, yeah. and they're big fairs where everybody goes and they have to schlep their work. I know. There. But they, they also, the big galleries so what is that? make billions of dollars. No, that's, not, that's good. not what he, That's not good. No, no, no. But I mean, no, I'm agreeing that's with not you, what he's saying he's saying there's a lot of crap out there and there's a lot of no i agree i agree agree. and he he points out at least in the sports world there is still a thriving amateur movement that serves younger people and others oh and i think that's good yeah well then back off but but that's what i said about the purity of of sport in the greek Greek, Greek times in regard to your polluted art world. Oh, I would be the first to okay. agree with you. I not don't believe the art world is pure or whatever. And then everybody gets all of their nose up in the air and acts like those of us who look at something and say, you call that Elitist. art? Yes. Yeah. That, that, I agree. Oh, well, you don't understand that. And I, you know, I finally, it took me a while to trust my own judgment yeah, and to say, you, should. you are out of your cotton-picking mind. That is crap. Yeah. 
I would answer that in two ways. One, you're right, the elitist stuff is, is, is crazy. The only thing, though, is that often in the modernist movement, it has been about being sort of ahead of the popular. Well, no, wait a minute, wait a minute before you stick your nose up. Uh, it's about, you know, uh, some of the artists have been about, you know, epite le bourgeois, like stick a pin in the, you know, the middle classes. And sometimes what artists are doing is, is revolutionary. And I'm not saying every time something is weird and crappy, it's great art. Okay, but what's going on now? And I think we've well, talked no, about, about it. Well, about is this performancey stuff? And the, well, but there's I mean, great performance Oh, there's art. wonderful performance All art. Right. But here, there was actually, a, somebody wrote a piece oh, in Judith the New York Dabrinsky. Times. Yeah. And the I know what I'm doing. And the here. letters, the letters that came back about what art museums are doing now. Well, the point creating. of this was this woman, this woman, Judith Dabrinsky, used to write exclusively for the New York Times. Now she blogs and writes, you know, these op-ed things and that. And her whole point was that many museums um, are now turning in order to get more people through the door. And I think on one level, they're trying to get a, go against this sort of elitist business. But her point was that it's getting so that they're sort of experience places as opposed to art museums sort of to be totally <coughs> crazy about it. it's like like Chuck E. Cheese <coughs> you know That's and right. bouncing balls and everything and, and you what, get involved yourself you right you're part but of the it. point is that in many instances as you said when you spent a good bit of time looking at a piece of art and then you thought it was crap um, it took the time of you in sort of solitary discourse with that work of art for you to figure that out. You couldn't do that by just whisking through and saying, oh, terrible, wonderful, terrible. But are we taking that experience away from people by having things that jingle and jangle and give them a photograph if, if they put a penny in the box or play loud music or something? And there are times when you just want to look at art. Uh, or, or just like listen to music, but I think part of it is in our society, um, especially for younger people, everyone is such a multitasker that you know you can't just look; you have to be listening and and twittering and whatever. And a serious work of art, whether it's a piece of literature or music or a play, requires attention. And most of the responses to her article were sort of right well, on, girl. Well, when you were the director, you made the Warhol more than a muse art museum. I yeah, mean, it was, was a destination. Motto. It was a place. It was right. a party place. It was a right. But it was, when you went into a certain gallery to see the the camouflage paintings or the death and disaster paintings of Marilyn Monroe, you could look at that work of art. In a quiet, contemplative yeah, manner. Yeah, and there was always, yeah, in our parties we did crazy things, but that was an add-on. Mm -hmm. But it's an add-on to get people in the door. Yeah, sure. Yeah. But I think getting, I would rather say where I think my view is different is that, you know, do some fun thing in the evening to get them to the door, but then make sure as part of the door they do have some one-on-one -on -one time with a work of art. You Some can't of the, have, like, topless <clears throat> guards jiggling in front of the paintings. Some of the... Um uh, some of the people who wrote in to the Times about this piece were had strong opinions. Yes, they did. Um, here is one. I believe that the museums are taking the easy way out when they try to pander to the public looking who are looking for an experience. Uh, and then she goes on to say, I believe that rather than creating rain rooms, there's something in New York Mama now where has you, a place, yeah. where you stand and wherever you go, the rain stops, but yeah, everything yeah, else, yeah. there's rain yeah, all around yeah. you. So, but rather than creating rain rooms and the opportunity to meet the artist, we should be educating all our children to love, appreciate, and feel at ease yeah, in the presence yeah. of art, yeah. great art of the past. Only then will museums truly fulfill their purpose and their role as a place of contemplation and appreciation. A similar thing said by this guy who's a high school art history teacher. For those in search of a more hands-on experience, try an amusement park. Well, it's somewhere in the middle of those, because I mean, I can see a little bit of sort of hooky nostalgia in that. But um, no, I, I, one thing that I've, has always been part of my particular credo is that 
people feel uncomfortable in museums because yes. it's not what they are taught to do. It's not what they do in that, in that what I just said about multitasking. But there is a way of helping them with good explanation so that they don't feel stupid, whether it's through a, 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 a live person or really good labeling that sort of asks people. Like, you know, it's very funny when people would you know, come and say, oh, Laurel, he didn't like Pittsburgh. You know, he was this weird guy, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. I said, oh, well, part of that's true, but he also was a working class guy who came from Eastern European roots, whose family worked in factories and coal mines. Sound like grandpa? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, when you'd say, oh, well, he did Coca-Cola, he did Marilyn Monroe, weren't those the icons of working class America? Popular culture, right. Oh, oh, yeah. And then all of a sudden you see the wheels going as opposed to like, oh, that weird guy, he was gay with his crazy hair and he knew silly people. And, you know, then you say, oh, didn't you have a crazy Uncle, Uncle Billy? You know, and all of a sudden it starts to matter. But you don't get it by saying, oh, the avant card. Well, well here, is, here is something that is mind-blowing. It, um, <clears throat> it is a statistic, and Ray, I'm sending this your way as well. There are about 850 million visits to American museums annually. Mm -hmm. And that is more than the attendance of all major league sporting events and theme parks combined. <laughs> <laughs> now, I wonder, is that possibly true? And I, I, and I just want to say the source for that 850 million visits is a little suspect because it's the American Alliance of Museums. Do you think they've upped the numbers? They're saying well, more they, wait, 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 than every football well, wait, wait, game, wait, 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 every wait, wait, baseball wait, wait, game, wait, every but look, like, Disney let's, let's World. Oh, the, come on. Wait, well, let's just look at the Steelers. I mean, very good team, beloved, etc. Sixty-two thousand people. But what do they play? You know, ten games a year. No, a little more. Well, a little more. But still. But, but a museum is open almost now. Well, like the Met is open. Modern Museum of Modern Art every day, and they, they must get like forty thousand people a day or something. Uh, that that's a lot of people. And then also you get children. Now they, that would also click into like bus tours of children and whatever. But no, museums are very much part, and it's, it's wonderful to see that because um, I very rarely see someone who has a horrible experience. I mean, some people may not have had the enriching experience. The oh. only thing that happens to me in museums because I have a bad back is oh, I well, get a, my back goes within well, an hour. On the no, you should get one of those like golf, I'm not golf gonna, oh a seats. thing like that. Not like like get a wheelchair. Lady. No, but like when golfers have those leaning things. So when I hear, "Oh, we're going to the museum," I think, "Oh." Because it hurts. <laughs> and then buy a squishy seat. It like hurts. No, no, I know what you're, what you're saying. Okay, here. Lynn, yesterday you were talking about trivia games at bars. Oh, let's wait. We're, we're going to wait on this. <laughs> we'll come back with that. All right. It's a trivia game that Dave, is this from Dave? Yeah. Um, and we'll see how well we do. And what are we going to call our team? <laughs> <laughs> Well, since blow you're, your blow your nose, <laughs> no, on the American flag. I've been told that what I got upset about the bear down on my finger was absolutely tame compared to what. So part these, of this thing is that you have to give it this lewd, lewd, not the, lewd. not at harp and fiddle, which I used to go to. That's one of. Uh, on, yeah, in the strip. Uh, that's actually where I met Ray the one time. It must be his. He said he saw me local. there. Well, that must be where he hangs then. Maybe, yeah. Okay. He said he saw me there, too. Um, all She's right. in every bar in town, folks. I'm <laughs> bearing down on fingers. <laughs> all right. We're, uh, hello? Could we take a break? Okay. We've just been censored. <laughs> Stick around for more with Lynn Cullen Live after this. Allen Events, producer of the country's most popular high-end festivals, returns to Walnut Street between South Aiken Avenue and South Negley Avenue in Shadyside. The 16th annual Shadyside, the art festival on Walnut Street, will be held August 24th and 25th, transforming this popular downtown shopping district of Pittsburgh into an outdoor art gallery with an eclectic mix of the country's top established artists as well as new and emerging talent. Admission is free and open to the public. Showtimes for the Shadyside, the art festival on Walnut Street are Saturday 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. and Sunday 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. For more information, go to artfestival.com. 
This week's Pittsburgh City Paper is available now. Pick up one today for the annual Steeler issue. Plus, City Paper's special auto guide pullout with all the hot dealers to buy your next car from. Pittsburgh City Paper, available at over 1,700 locations throughout Western Pennsylvania and on the web at pghcitypaper.com and on your smartphone with GPS-enabled listings at citypapermobile.com. Les Ludwig, your independent, self-financed, clean candidate for mayor of Pittsburgh. You've heard the saying, same old, if we don't change what we're doing, we can only expect the same results. Let's look at what the Democratic Party leadership of your lifetime is asking you to do on Election Day. They want you to forget that they and Ravenstahl have not lived up to minority contracts and the jobs involved in it. If government promises work and jobs and wants to leave it for the next candidate, will it ever get done? How can we trust Peduto and especially the leadership when they continue to act this way? Are they hiding something worse than Harper's misdeeds? Vote November 5th and remember, same old. Embrace change and work willingly with it. Think outside the party's box. Make Les Ludwig your mayor and join his march to clean government and keeping promises. Now it's back to Lynn Cullen Live at pghcitypaper.com. Ah, oh, this is this is tough. See, you know, David, I'm proud of you. David said that he put together a. This is the one that he 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 uh, created this trivia contest for a Washington County bar, where the winner the winner got a four. four. Twenty five. Wow. I think I already have three, but I might be wrong. Well, you'd be smart. Well, let's see. <laughs> you'd be surprised when you okay. I'm throwing this out to you guys, too. What two Republican candidates, first in 92 and then in 96, did Bill Clinton defeat in the presidential election? I'll let you think. What's interesting about that is you do, your brain just goes into, yeah, right. shuts down. I, okay, I came up with Bush, H.W., and Dole. No one here is giving me crap about it, although you don't seem too sure. Yeah, I'm not so sure. That's well, who did Dole run? No, you're probably right. Yeah, Dole. Yeah, you're probably right. Am I right? What year did the first man, the man, first step on the moon? I think it's '69. Yeah, I think you're probably right. Well, how many U.S. states border the Pacific Ocean? I'm coming up with f- five. Yeah, I think you're right. <laughs> No, we, we were talking about before we <clears throat> came on. You know. Okay, Hawaii, Alaska, Washington, Oregon, California. Am I forgetting anything? Probably. Number four, what is the westernmost European capital? And you can't, and forget about Greenland and Iceland, just the, the continental Europe. Now, remember, it juts out there down south, Spain. like Spain. So Madrid, Barcelona. Barcelona's not the capital. Spit. Well, then what the hell? Madrid, well, honey bunny. Okay, fine. <laughs> We're going with Madrid. <laughs> Anybody else have another idea? See, she only knows the here. American stuff. She's I've such always a said my geography genialist. is crap. <laughs> okay. What is the only graduate? Who is the only graduate of the United States Naval Academy, Academy to become president of the United States? I got that. Jimmy Carter. Oh, See, really? Yeah. So I'm already at least that. got That's four or five. Good for you, all right. Okay, six. In the Saturday Night Live More Cowbell skit, Jess, I don't know this. What song were they recording? Repeat it. In the Saturday Night Live More Cowbell skit, okay. what song were they recording? Hmm. Hmm. You can't go on I Google. Why? I don't because that's not what you do in a, in a, in a you well, either you know it or answer? you don't. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Your neighbor, your neighbor, okay, here's number seven. Your neighbor says he has a Hemingway cat. You look it over and tell him, no, you don't. How do you know? I know because Hemingway cats have a sixth toe. Oh, yeah. Oh. What? Why yeah. is it called Hemingway, Hemingway cats? Cat? Well, because the cats, you know, he had cats uh, on his, in his little bailiwick there. Oh, okay. And they all had those six, oh. you know. Toes. Oh, okay. I didn't know okay. that. Okay. Jeez, you guys. What is the hardest substance in your body? Bone, I would guess. No. Probably not that. Enamel? Tooth enamel? Oh, that's a good one. No, but tooth enamel is not harder than bone, is it? I bet it is. My 
enamel's gone, but my bones are <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good Well, my tooth enamel's more than my bones. <laughs> and then I have a thick skull, so but that's skull is bone. bone. I don't know. Well, that's you want, right. we're, I'm going with tooth enamel. Right. You can go with bone. At two and a half million light years away, what is the farthest object visible to the naked eye? Mm. Well, the moon would be one thing, but over the star, well... No. The moon, I would guess. Because you can see it. I have no idea. I have no idea. You can jump in here, guys, if you can. Yes. Uh, 412-316-3381. Okay, number 10. Who is the only NFL quarterback to start five Super Bowls? Did Bradshaw start five? I want to say it be wrong. <laughs> well, why? Okay, it's Bradshaw or it's, um, it's. I know nothing about sports. Oh, God knows you don't know. <laughs> I'm thinking uh, in New uh, uh, San Francisco. Uh, oh, never mind. Joe Montana. I don't know. Okay, 11. The Rosetta Stone unlocked the mystery to translating what ancient writing? Cuneiform, I think. Hieroglyphics. No. Hieroglyphics. No. Cuneiform. Hieroglyphics. Well, all right. There weren't hieroglyphics on the, on the Rosetta Stone. There was... Cuneiform? Cuneiform writing, I think. Hieroglyphics. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Is someone <laughs> bipolar here? Hieroglyphics. Hieroglyphics. <laughs> Whose 1978 presidential memoir begins with the line, I was born in the house my father built? Hieroglyphics. <laughs> Hieroglyphics. Okay. Oh. Okay, 12. Whose 1970? I don't know. I'll think. come back and think about that. Brett Favre started an NFL record 275 because it was in Green Bay Packers, including postseason. Which NFL team initially drafted Brett Favre? Oh, oh. And then idiotically let him go. Um, ah, the uh, the Steelers. Really? I don't know. <laughs> ah! I don't know. Who began an address before a joint session of Congress with the words "All I have, I would have given gladly not to be standing here today." Hmm. Falcons. Falcons. Okay. Uh, f- who? Hmm. Be- a joint session, account, all I have, would I've gladly given not to be standing here hmm. today. Well, that could be, um, it doesn't sound like what FDR would have said as no. he took us into the war. No. Um, and the way it says all I have, it must be someone who had some wealth. Or well, maybe it would some, have to well, be a president. Or be someone, well, or what about someone who... Became president, like vice president or something, when someone was died or assassinated, like LBJ maybe. Yeah, would have said that. Yeah, I like that. I'm going with LBJ. I think that's good. Because he would have said that. Because maybe. Of, Where that? are the smallest bones in your body located? Hmm. Smallest bones in the body. Finger, toe. Ear. Is there bone? No, the cartilage. I don't think there's bone. You don't think like the stirrup and the... the he's made what? out of bone? No, I think it's cartilage. The cart- stirrup! The anvil! What? <laughs> Jeez, where'd Those you go to school? Those are parts of the ear? Yeah, uh. Uh-huh. Yeah, uh. Well, I think it's cartilage and not bone, but I don't know. Okay. I'm going to say ear. <laughs> All right, good. What is underneath the floor of the White House press briefing room? <laughs> the basement. I don't know. How about the, uh, yeah, the... Um, you know, the where you go if uh, the, the, the... Oh, the bunker of some sort? Yeah, thing? right. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, how are you guys doing at home? It's probably a bowling alley or something. Oh, my God. Okay, oh, here, here, oh, oh we do have the... Okay. okay. Wait. Oh. What, char- what character was played by the same actor or actress in both the movie and the television series M.A.S.H.? Who played the same character in both the TV series and the movie? Alan Alda. Alan Alda, Alda too. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I thought so. Okay. Alan Alda. Are you sure it wasn't Loretta Swit? No. Okay. Because they're two, two different uh, hot lips. Who killed Officer J.D. <coughs> J. Tippett? 
Mm. Oswald. Oh, that's right, yeah. 19. Who killed Laura Palmer? Her dad. Her father. Did he? Yeah. My that son, was, but, Twin Peaks. Twin Peaks, My right. son keeps trying to get me to watch that. I that won't. That is the so weirdest good. show. Okay, who killed Ralph Cifaretto? No idea. Is that Sopranos? Who killed no, Ralph? I don't think so. I don't know. Or may, oh, maybe it was. Who Ralph killed and... Duck Koo Kim? <laughs> that sounds like a Dorothy Parkerism, doesn't it? I don't know who Duck Koo Kim know, is. I do know something Korean. Oh. Call. Hello. It was Radar. Radar? Yeah, Radar was in both. It wasn't Alda. No. Well, who played? Donald the... Sutherland played, played oh, right. Alan Alda. Oh, yeah, 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 Radar. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Way to go. Okay. Um, which president took office without running on a national ticket? Mm. Which president took office with a... Oh, Gerald Ford. No. Yes, Gerald Ford. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Um, Good for you. You are diagnosed with bovine spongiform encephalopathy. Frankly, you are screwed. What do you have? You have uh, mad cow disease. Yes, right. We're almost at the end. 24. On the TV show Leave it to Beaver, what was Beaver Cleaver's first name? The character, not the actor. What was Beaver's real name? Oh, that's right. I don't know. What is the largest concrete structure in the United States? The Pentagon. Is it concrete? Yeah. I'm, I don't I'm know not. what the hell it is. <laughs> okay, so now we'll find out uh, how smart we are. Oh, we got a caller. Okay. Hello, did you want help with these? Yes, yeah, what do you please. got? What do you got? Okay, I have a few. Um, first, the European capitals. I think you forgot Portugal. Lisbon is further. Lisbon. Oh, very good. Very Way good. Go. Yeah, you're right. I, I, I think, I think, and I'm, I'm not cheating. I could check Google if I want to. But Brett Favre was, wasn't he uh, drafted by the uh, either the Broncos or the Colts? Does that sound familiar? No, I mean, Jess cheated and looked it up and oh. came up with what'd you come up with? Atlanta? No, 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 Atlanta no, no. Fans. I'm saying I'm playing it. Honestly, and I'm not cheating. <laughs> That's good for you. Okay. Good for you, but I don't think you're right either. Okay. Okay. Good and for you. Yeah. What one? else? And, um, oh, geez, I'm sorry. I, I'm getting old. The very last one you read. Uh, was the biggest concrete structure in the United States. Hoover Dam, I believe. Oh. Ooh, good. That's good. Thank yeah. you. Oh, you're welcome. Have a good day. Yeah. Bye -bye. See, if we could all be on a team, we would win. Okay. The answers are... George W. H. W. and Bob Dole. That was right. 1969. That was okay. right. You know, we would have won the, the bar thing. <laughs> we were right with five states yeah. border the Pacific. We're up to three. We were wrong about Madrid being the... It's, yeah. It is Lisbon. Lisbon smart. Uh, Jimmy Carter, right, about right about Jimmy Carter being the only naval graduate. The NS SNL yeah. thing was Don't Fear the Reaper by Blue Oyster Cult. Uh, I, I was right about the Hemingway cats have six toes. Oh, you're right about tooth. And tooth enamel is Good the hardest you. thing in your body. The Andromeda galaxy, which we didn't, we did, is the farthest thing you can see from Earth. No, I didn't think you could see that. Uh, John Elway is the guy, not Montana or Bradshaw, who started five Super Bowls. Uh, b -b -b hieroglyphics. Correct. Uh, it, was, uh, it was Nixon who uh, said, I was born in the house my father built. Mm. Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, the, it was the Atlantic Falcons who, uh, in round two, took Brett Favre and then let him go. <laughs> you are correct, LBJ. Who said that? I did. Uh, and you're right about the ears. And the you're ears, the smallest the bones are in the uh. ear. Um, underneath the, uh, what was it underneath what? The, uh, uh, the, the press briefing room. The press briefing well, room. I was close with that bowling alley. Is, is, a, is a swimming pool. Swimming pool. Radar. Okay. Radar. We, so we had been wrong about that. Yes. Um, yeah, Lee Harvey awesome. Oswald killed Officer Tippett. Um her father killed her. Tony I said, was it the Sopranos? I yeah, should have yeah. just put it down. Dang. And Ray Boom Boom Mancini. 
whoever that is. Killed. Oh, no, no, no. There's just a book out about it. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I should have known. I just read it. No, 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 in the boxing ring. Oh, 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 oh. No, he killed another boxer. Oh, I see. Just ruined him, too. Gerald Ford replaced Spiro Agnew and then became president without ever having run in a national mad cow disease. We are correct. Mm -hmm. 20, uh, Theodore, what was the question? And Grand Cooley Ooh, Dam. So. Hoover Dam, great guess. Yeah. And uh, we did damn good. Yeah. Well, you were better than I. Oh, but... uh, so it was what was Leave It to Beaver's oh, real name was Theodore. Theodore. Yeah, I knew it was sort of a. Okay, so how many did we would have gotten? Well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13. That's better than the guy. What did you say? The person only got four right? 13. Bar? 13 out of 25. And believe me, that ain't that good. And four won it in Washington County. <laughs> um, Hardly the Harvard of Western Pennsylvania. Jeez, that's amazing. Hey, Dave, thanks. That was fun. Yeah, that was good. That was fun. Thank you all. It appears we have fun. No, but one quick thing. Oh, run our no, When you talked yesterday about that silly, you know, bend your butt on my finger or whatever the name of it was, the reason of trivia. I mean, that was, in a sense, trivia. This is, fa I mean, you know, how you do, is trivia serious and No, trivia, no, I think it should be serious. It's little facts. Yeah, well, it's probably. I mean, people with who think like this kind of thing, because it takes in everything. It's geography, it's popular That's culture, right. TV stuff, it's sports, it to Beaver. it's, yeah, right. it's Politics, it's it's all that stuff, and and yeah, that was fun. And what's interesting, and also it was mostly pretty recent, other than the one reference to FDR. It really was, let's say, from the '60s up, or maybe from the late. There wasn't 50s anything up. from FDR. Yeah, there was something about. Was no, I said it was FDR. No, 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 no. No, psh, go back to the answers. Oh, for God's <laughs> sakes! For God's no, sakes! There wasn't. You yes, there was. No, it's over. The show is so oh, over. Goodbye. <laughs> God. Hey, guys, bye. <laughs> Tomorrow. The pool. Lynn Cullen Live, Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. and archived at pghcitypaper.com. The opinions expressed on Lynn Cullen Live are those of the host and do not necessarily reflect the viewpoints of Pittsburgh City Paper, Steel City Media, and its advertisers.